I wanted to say, brother, our life is hid in Christ. And because they're going to kill us on a mass level anyway, we might as well stand up and do something. So we're going to, they have a half a million coffins right now on an army base here in Georgia for a half a million blacks and minorities that will be rounded up during the next martial law here in Georgia. That's why we came here. So in order for us to save lives, we must put our life on the line. Huh? What you got to understand is that I, I respect everything that you're saying. But what I'm saying, brother, is that what you teaching, America don't want you to teach. Absolutely. But for, for so many years, I mean, they have deceived and lied to our people. Now here you come up with truth, trying to digest this knowledge to our people, and America is saying no. That's all I'm saying, brother. See, but you're right, but one thing that didn't count out, the same God that split the Red Sea, when our people walked through, Pharaoh thought he had winds. We had water on one side, and we had an army come bearing down our back on the other. And the Lord split the Red Sea for our safety, and that same sea was death for those that tried to come against us. So America gonna lose this time. And, you, and, and, if, we, and if, if our life is, is less, saving souls, then that's an honorable death. Look how many brothers out here dying for nothing, man. You understand? You have brothers out here dying for nothing, shooting, shooting each other over what color scarf a person have on. They're not dying for nothing. At least you have brothers out here that's going to stand for something and love their people enough to sacrifice their own life. We came all the way from Pennsylvania, man, to tell you people in Georgia that the coffins are right here, the fever coffins. They're right here. Half a million of you will be in those concentration camps. And don't think that they can't do it to you if they did it to the Jewish people over in Europe. You're next. That was just a test of what they're going to do on a high level. So what the brother is bringing out is strong, but what, what we want to show you is, man, there's a reward for losing your life doing this. How many of our people are losing their lives for nothing, man? So the Lord says you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. How can you be free if the Lord don't see his intentions? I'm going to show you. Get Romans 10 and 13 first. We're going to show you something, man. And we have some key information that we, we will not even go out going to on the street. We're going to teach tonight. And then we're going back home, man. Let's get Romans 10 and 13. We're here for you, man. We're here for the people because we know the preachers are singing and dancing and getting paid and are not warning the people. So we have to come out in the highways and the gaps open up the Bible and tell you that God has a problem with this society. We have to tell you that no longer do you need to be uh, entrapped with the entrapment of, of what our foreparents went through. Because now the truth is here. There's no excuse for us to stand on the lies that our foreparents were under. Romans 10 and 13, read. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? So how can our people call on the true God when a fake God has been taught here in this world? Read. And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? We have not heard about the true God. We don't even know the true God name because he's not taught in this society. They hid his name from us. Because they know when we call on him, he will hear us like he heard us crying in Egypt. Up, his name is Ahaya Asha Ahaya, which means I am that I am. He hit that name into, into the 144,000 leaders that will lead our people in this time. Christ's real name is Yeshua. His name is not Jesus. That's a European name that was given us. Because they was having us follow the son of Zeus. Hey Zeus. Zeus. There's a European pagan god that have enslaved the people. So how shall you know unless the Lord sent preachers? Read. And how shall they hear without a preacher? The only way you'll hear is if we come out here. There's, a, there's better things we can do on a Saturday morning. We're not working today. We're gonna be home under the air condition. We out here in the starving heat. Because we love you, man. And see, if Christ was walking this earth, we know he would be doing the same thing. He wouldn't be out here getting paid on the people. He wouldn't set up a church and tell you to get rich in the world he's about to destroy. He would do the same thing. Christ said, I command you to go out in the highway in the gaps. Go 
only way the people are outside for church to get paid. The Lord says it shall come a time where your pastors shall not be scattered in corners anymore. That your eyes shall see your teachers. How can your eyes see your teachers when the preachers are too hard to talk to the people like we are here today? Let the brothers know. If you want to find out what's going on, go to the Bloods and Crips and talk to them, man. Like Christ would. Go sit down with the drug dealers and the homosexual like Christ would. Read. Romans 10 to 15. And how shall they preach except they be sent? We were sent by God. Before the Lord destroyed any empire, he sent teachers. He sent prophets. He sent leaders. He sent Jonah to prophesy on Nineveh. He had Lot during the time of Sodom and Gomorrah. He had Moses during our worst captivity, one of the worst captivity during, during the time of Egypt. He sent Daniel during the time of Babylon. And we are here, brother, because we are at the end of our captivity. We're letting you know, no longer, brother, when you have to be running around trying to scrape for pennies, man. It's almost up. No longer will we work. Our bondage is about to be broken, but now the Lord has freed us, but we don't want to let go. We're trying to uphold the system when it's already broken. We're going to let you know that, listen, our time is here. Christ is time. Christ will bring judgment here, man. Get Hosea 4 and 1 for me. So we're saying, listen, now you brothers, it's time for you to stand up now. It's time for you to take your rightful position, man. That's why sisters jumped in our position. Because we started chasing something else. It's time for us to take our position as leaders because this thing cannot go around unless 144,000 men stand, man. Stand. We can stand and do drugs. We can stand and shoot our own people. We can stand to do evil. How many of us ready, are ready to stand to do what's right? Even if it means your life. Hosea 4 and 1, read. Hear the words of the Lord, ye children of Israel. For the Lord have a controversy with the inhabitants of the land. The Lord have a controversy with the inhabitants of this land. You don't believe me? No one ever thought that Georgia would be hit with tornadoes like it was hit just a few months ago. Out of nowhere. Bring this out. We'll bring it out. <laughs> we'll bring it out, brother. No one thought, brother, that it was going to go down. He has a controversy with this land. Seven tornadoes uh, hit down in one place at once two weeks ago. Yeah. Tornadoes, the Lord is killing this place. Right now, fires. This place is on fire, man. No one is perceiving that it's the hand of God against this country, man. The Lord is setting us free. Before he set us free out of ancient Egypt, he sent plagues, man. So what are the corporations doing? They signed the NAFTA agreement and they set up their corporations outside of the United States because they know their God cannot fight against our God. They, they, have, set, they, they have set down with the Dalai Lama and the Pope and still the, the high sources cannot stop the plagues of Israel that's hitting this place. Our God is destroying this place by fires, plagues, storms. It's our God because we're not strong enough to fight ourselves. We're too weak-minded. Read. Because there is no truth. There's no what? There is no truth. That's why the Lord is fighting against this place, because there's no truth here like you just mentioned, brother. There's no truth. You can't get truth in the church. You can be in a church for four hours. The preacher will read two scriptures and sing and dance and pass the plate six times and tell you God loves you. Listen, I know God loved me already. Let me know why God is jacking America up. Let me know why George Bush is sending our children off the war to die in an unjust war. That's what our pastors are supposed to teach. Really? Because there is no truth, no, no mercy, no knowledge of God in the land. There is no knowledge of God here, man. We should be teaching top knowledge. It's a shame that we have to teach small things like this guy is not Jesus Christ. We should be over this by now. <laughs> you understand but we have to teach it because so many of our people are still stuck. They're stuck, brother. Yeah. So we're out here saying, listen, what will we do? Are we going to stand here, I don't, while this place is about to be destroyed by nuclear fire? Give me Isaiah 13. Fire is coming here. It's in the Bible. I'm surprised the preachers are not talking about it. The Lord tell you, hell has enlarged itself in Isaiah the 14th chapter. How do you know? Hell has burnt itself to the earth. 
They inspire every person. People who haven't perceived that the Lord is judging. People down in those Malibu houses, six and seven million dollar houses, is sliding down the side of a mountain on fire, man. But the Lord is perceiving that it's the power of God. Chapter and verse, read it live, bro. Isaiah 29 and 6. Thou shalt be visited on the Lord of hosts with thunder and with earthquake. With what? With thunder and with earthquake. And with great noise with the storm and tempest the flame of the fire and fire. The Lord is visiting America. See, he had to do this because why? He know that we're too naive and, and, and stuck in our ways to fight ourselves. While we're running around here shopping on the Sabbath of the Lord, we don't even know that we're breaking God's law. You're not supposed to be out here shopping on the Sabbath. While we out here disrespecting God's law, they have a half a million coffins right now on an army base waiting with your name on. We're one more national disaster or national attack or national emergency from George Bush getting total dictatorship yeah. over America. That's right. Once they get this dictatorship, there will be no election. So you Obama rights. You Clinton rights, you McCain rights, that's a dream, man. George Bristol signed everything into law to the point where he don't ever have to step down from his position if he don't want to. That's right, he's so good. And while we run around here shopping, don't think that the military, that you see the Homeland Security and all the, the cops and the way they're operating right now, don't think that they don't already have a plan in case you get out of here. The only people that are, not, that are not planning is us. That's right. We're the only people that's so naive because we believe that God would save us in dire straits that we don't prepare. The only fools operate in a system and don't prepare. This is war, man. This is war. War is not always guns and, and guns and weaponry. The first topic of war is mental. It's mental, man. What's going to happen? Give me Isaiah 13 and 1. We're going to show you blow by blow what's about to happen here. And we're prophesying on this country. We're prophesying here in New Brothers in Georgia because we just learned that FEMA have FEMA trains with toxins in them. That they will gas you on the way to your coffins. This is the same uh, institution that, that was supposed to help you during Katrina. Yep, FEMA. They are funded with your tax money to kill you. It's the same corporation. Yes, it's FEMA is a corporation. Brothers and sisters, it's not time to party. It's time to start thinking. It's time to start praying. It's time to start repenting. Within a few months, your life will change like you never thought it would before. Your life is about to change, and Christ said it's going to be the worst time on this earth ever, will be, and ever was. And those that are the, 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 those that are dead in their sins during the hour of temptation will be taken. Don't be naive. The information is in the book. We've just we've just not read the book. We've we've trusted in our pastors, and our pastors don't know the book. They learn, they learn doctrine from a theologian seminary college. What college can you go to learn about God, man? Are you kidding me? You can't institutionalize the spirit. You can't institutionalize and get somebody a book and say, yeah, you're ready. No, you have to be called by the Most High. You have to understand this book and be able to break down the mysteries and bring forth the prophecies according to the book. It's no time for the singing and dancing and celebrating, man. Those days are over, man. We, 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 we can celebrate and sing when we're in Zion. Isaiah 13 and 1, read. The burden of Babylon, which Isaiah the son of Amos did see. Lift up ye up a banner upon the high mountains. Exalt the voice of children. So the Lord told us to lift, lift up a high banner. That banner we're lifting up is Christ. And do what with our voice? Read that again. Lift up, lift you up a banner upon the high mountain. Exalt the voice unto them. We have to exalt our voice to you. I know a lot of you don't like us shouting and talking, but if someone is about to fall off a mountain, what you gonna tell them? Don't hold up. Don't, don't, don't go over the mountain. No. You have to look, look the mountain, brother the mountain. You have to scream and shake them. 
we are assigned to the people. Everyone is looking for this big miracle to happen. And Christ, are you sick of a sign? You will not get a sign but the sign of Jonah. What did they have Jonah do? To prophesy on Nineveh. Where is your sign? You must sit there and love to do this. It's like this is a, a game to us or something. We see something you can't see. The same way he sent Moses. He sent Moses to his land and said, listen, let my people go. And you have, to, you have his own people fighting against him. Why are you going to bring us out here if I want to die? Let us go back to Egypt. Same way. Same way. Now our people want to stay in Egypt. When this, this ain't freedom. Freedom is to be able to enjoy the earth. You went from sun to sun down and still don't have your bills paid, man. This ain't freedom. This is slavery, man. We want free, man. What's free? Free is when you can say, I have my own land. I have my own. I can work when I want to work. I can eat when I want to eat. I have my own land. I have my own crops. I have my own animals. Let me go so I can sacrifice to my God. That's freedom, man. You think you're free, stop working. Let me show you how free you are. Stop working, Mr. Free. You are in bondage. And they're so slick because they had you pay for your captivity, didn't make you think you're free. At least when you were a slave picking pins and cotton in the 1800s, they paid for your pension, they paid for your help because they needed you to work. Now you are a slave and you have to pay for your own everything. Read? Isaiah 13 and 2. Lift ye up a banner upon the high mountain. Go ahead. Exalt the voice unto them. Shake the hand that they may go into the gates of the nobles. And we're shaking our hands. We're we proud. But you can go back to the gates of your nobles. The TV jets, the creator for a dollar, the walls and all these, pick the preachers. Go and tell them that the Lord our God is about to take them down. They're not preaching the Bible. They're singing and dancing and celebrating at a time when you're supposed to be reading, playing, repenting, and changing. Read. I have commanded my sanctified ones. I have also called my sanctified ones, my mighty ones, and my anger. Even them that rejoice in my highness. My Go ahead. The noise of the multitude in the mountains, like as of a great people, of tumultuous noise of the kingdoms. Of so what's going on? The Lord is stirring up war. He's stirring up all these empires to war against this country. So it's no, it's no surprise that George Bush is over in our rack right now, about to go into our own. And while we're sitting here partying and, and ignoring what's going on in Bible prophecy, this place is going to get hit first. Missiles is coming here now. But they were trying to kill us before this time. So we have to come to you, man. You're not hearing this information in your churches, man. I'm not out here trying to know we're not passing no buckets or nothing, man. Why? What will your money do for us with what's about to go down? How much can you, what can you do? You can't pay our way out of this. Bombs is coming here, man. Bombs, nuclear annihilation. So what will we do? We don't. They come from a far country, from the end of heaven.